Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be painting the wheels off the Mini that are originally silver and nice gloss black. We're going to be talking you through the steps on how to do it or how I do it and having a look at the before and then the end results and seeing just how much of an improvement you can make to your wheels on your own in your back garden. Let's do it. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is get the wheels off the car. As you can see the barrels are extremely dirty so you want to go in with a decent wheel cleaner and try and get them as clean as possible before you start doing any sanding. All this is going to do is just help you out. I'm using a wheel cleaner diluted at 4 to 1 in a spray bottle and then I'm using an IK foamer over the top just to give a bit of lubrication to aid with the cleaning. Then giving it a scrub with a Vican brush before giving it a quick rinse down and we can see the massive difference that it's made already just by using some chemicals. Once I've done that in the rear of the wheel or in the barrel of the wheel, I'm going to flip it over, I'm going to do the exact same process on the front of the wheels and then we'll be good to get on with the preparation for the alloy wheel restoration and colour change. So once you've got your wheels as clean as you can get, you're ready to start doing some work on them. In this video, as you can see I've got a little bit of care brush on these wheels, so I'm going to be getting rid of that as well as painting them black. So these wheels already have some wheel balancing weights on them. Now you can paint over them if you want, but I'm going to get some new tyres on these so they're going to get rebalanced, so I'm going to take them off and get rid of all the sticky residue. So to do that, I've got a chisel, oh my god a chisel, yeah a chisel, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in between the weight and the sticky backing plate to just pry it off, nice and easy, no damage and then you can just pick it off. However you are left with this horrible sticky mess, now that sticky mess can be somewhat a pain in the ass to get rid of unless you get one of these, which is called a caramel wheel or a toffee wheel. You can pick them up for about five or six pounds on Amazon. I'll link it down below in the description. And all that's going to do is just basically rip all the remaining sticker off. It's great as well if you've got decals on your car that you want rid of, or you're doing a debadging. Very simple, you want to just kind of try and use the corner of the wheel, and it'll take everything off, like so. Nice and easy, quick wipe with tar and glue to just get rid of any more residue and that'll be good to go. So once you've got all that wheel weight glue off, if you want to go through that process, the next stage is getting everything really as clean as possible, as well as getting it all scuffed up. To do that, get some grey scotch bite pad and a bucket of soapy water. You're going to go around the whole wheel and the objective is to get the wheel as dull as possible so that you're ready to start painting it or start doing any repairs that you want to do. Now that the wheels are all nice and clean and free of any contamination, we can go in and have a look. Now in my case, these wheels have a bit of oxidation, which I'm going to have to sand out. If you don't have this issue, you can just skip ahead a little bit, but what I'm using is I've got a small hand polisher that I use, which I just stick a little bit of 120 grit sandpaper onto the backing pad and then I can sand out any oxidation. I do the same method for treating any care brush, which I've got here, just to get rid, to knock the paint down, to flatten the area out. If you don't have one of these machines, you can do it by hand, it'll just take a little bit longer, but you'll end up with the same results nonetheless. Once you've sanded out as much of the care brush as possible, you'll notice that little lip of paint. What you then want to do is just go over that little lip, with some finer grade sandpaper 
So I'm going, I've went 120 and then I think this is 240 and then I went to 360 and then finished off with 400 just to give a nice smooth transition. Now the damage is all sanded out on all the wheels. You can go about getting them all dried off, getting the tyres masked up and then start putting down some etch primer. We're using etch primer because these areas here need etch primer. If you use just regular high build primer on bare metal, there's a very good chance that in six months time you'll be doing the same thing again. Now I know there's a fair few videos out there on YouTube of people telling you how to paint your wheels black and stuff like that. And what a lot of them do is they tell you to use playing cards or something to prevent you getting overspray on the tyres. Don't do that. Take your time, mask the wheel up properly, and you'll only have to do it once. And you won't have to wreck a decent set of playing cards to do it as well. Now that all the sanding's done, the tyres are somewhat masked up. We can start getting our etch primer onto the bare metal areas. Once the etch primer's on, we can give the wheels a right good panel wipe, and then we can start laying down some colour. So let's get the rest of the wheels primed up and then we can get on with the fun stuff. When I'm masking up I've got this big sheet that I can use. If you don't just have that kind of sheet, just get yourself a bin bag, it does the same job. And then like I mentioned earlier, you're using etch primer. The reason you're using etch primer is that it self etches into any bare metal areas and it's going to stop, it's going to prevent any paint flaking off. I've not masked up that wheel because that tyre's burst and it's going to be getting replaced so it doesn't matter if I get any paint on it at the moment. Once you've done the back areas, flip the wheels round, get the faces and then we should be good to go for paint. Alright, so now that we've got the wheels prepped, we've got them masked up, or ready to go. I'm going to go out and I'm going to give them a clean down with an IPA mixture. So it's an isopropyl alcohol mixture which I've got ready made in my bottle here. All that is, is a mixture of deionized water and 99.9% alcohol. Can't remember the exact mixture, I'll put it in the um, description below, but what that's going to do is act as a panel wipe. So it's going to clear off any kind of debris that's there or any kind of grease, wax, stuff like that, that may be from, from your fingers, from handling the wheels. It's going to give you a nice fresh surface to paint the wheels. I'm going to go out and do that. I'll not make you watch it, then we can come back to the painting. Now that the wheels are all clean, I can start laying down some colour. I'm using a compressor and a spray gun here. However, if you don't have a compressor and a spray gun, you can go to any kind of paint manufacturer and get any colour that you want made up in spray cans. From previous experience, I would recommend one can per wheel if you're going to be doing the barrels and the faces. The first coat that you want to lay down is generally quite a light coat. With When you're laying down your base colour, you really do not want to go heavy because getting runs out of base is an absolute nightmare. It's much easier to get a run out of your lacquer than it is to get a run out of your base. So on your second coat, you can go that little bit heavier. In total, I applied three coats to the barrels and then flipped the wheels over and applied a further three coats to the faces with the first coat being quite light, second coat being a little bit heavier and the third coat again being a little bit heavier. You want to give it a good 10 to 15 minutes in between each coat if you're doing it outside and what you should notice is that as the base coat dries it should start to go a bit more of a satin or matte finish. This is because we've not applied any clear lacquer yet to give it that real high gloss finish that we're looking for. But that's what we're going to do next. In between applying your base coat and your lacquer, your clear coat, you want to allow at least half an hour for the paint to dry. You don't want any solvents to get trapped underneath the lacquer. All it's going to do is dull down your finish. I applied two coats of lacquer, one mist coat to start off with, and then one final very heavy coat and this is the results that I got. With your lacquer you want to leave it for a good few hours before you start taking your masking off. I've left it, I think it was three hours here and then I've went and removed all my masking and then I can have a final look at what the wheels are going to look like. 
once you've got your masking tape off you want to leave them indoors for a good 12 hours to really start to dry and harden up properly because they will still be very soft to the touch if you'd stick your finger on them at the moment. Ideally, overnight's always a good shout. So all in all, I'm extremely chuffed with how the wheels have turned out. The gloss on them is absolutely fantastic. The finish is flawless. There's no paint runs, there's no marks. You can hardly see any of that curb rash that was on them. So all in all, I think they're going to look really good on the car. When it comes to price, when you weigh it up against getting a set of wheels powder coated, it probably works out a little bit cheaper than what it would cost you to do that. Obviously, with a whole lot of additional effort. To be honest, when you're taking into consideration all the materials that you would use, you're probably going to be the best part of £100 to get this done, if, especially if you're doing it with rattle cans. I'm very fortunate in the fact that I had everything that I need in the garage, so it cost me nothing. I already had the paint, I already had the clear coat, I already had all the sandpaper and all the materials. All I had to do was spend a couple of afternoons getting them to where they are just now. So just take that into consideration if you are ever thinking about painting or changing the colour of your wheels. Sometimes just getting a professional to do them might save you a little bit of time and effort. And sometimes doing it DIY is a little bit more expensive than what you originally might think it would cost you. But apart from that, if you are going to give it a crack, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've liked it. If you have, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, see you on the next one.